great quote i love to read is the greatest barrier to success is your fear of failure fear just stops so many people from doing what they want to do in life it's a great acronym for fear and that is force evidence appearing real and yes it fear can appear so real at times whether you realize it or not fear has shaped your likes and dislikes chosen your friends influenced your work and even raised your children your fears can keep you from accepting yourself and realizing your full potential all of us have fears fear of rejection fear of looking stupid fear of not being good enough fear of the past and even fear of the future it is your fears that stop you from doing many of the things you want to do in your life fear can be like a straitjacket that immobilizes and stagnates your growth and development to control and even overcome fear you must first know what you fear and try to understand why you fear it by accepting and keeping company with it you will eventually learn how to conquer it conquering fear does not mean destroying it when you conquer something you take control of it and become its master no one can ever completely destroy fear and why should you it is an integral part of your protection system whether you like it or not shift your thinking from being afraid of making mistakes to being afraid of not making a mistake if you are not making any mistakes you can be sure you are not learning and growing do I experience fear at times? Of course I do, but I do not allow my fears to stop me from stepping out in faith and going after my goals and plans for my life. My life experiences have taught me that on the other side of fear is growth. So the message today is stop allowing your fear of failure to stop you from manifesting the glorious plan God has for your life. Changing the way you see fear and seeing it as feedback rather than failure is one way I have found to overcome my fear of failing. So as always, this is Ken saying, whatever you do this week, make sure you are awesome. Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Lean Bites Live. It's a, a pleasure that you have taken the time to be with me this evening on the I won't say the last Wednesday of the lockdown because we've got another lockdown next week. But yeah, you could have been doing so many things this evening, but you chose to be here with me. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Ken, the Lean Mind Body Coach. And I specialize in two things. I specialize in helping people lose weight and also reverse their pre-diabetes. So in a sense, preventing diabetes. And those and weight gain and diabetes are the two things that affect people from Caribbean and African descent so much. I mean, it's a crisis within our community and I've decided to dedicate the rest of my life to helping people manage in those two areas because I've had my time. I've had my time where my weight was, it was just off the scale. In fact, this is how I looked um, only a few years ago. This is how I looked. So you can see that's a, a, a massive transformation that I made during my journey. And what I've done also, I've actually documented my journey in a book called The Lean Mind Body Method. And that is what today is all about. It's just very, very small kind of snippets from the principles of the Lean Mind Body Method, which focuses on exercise, nutrition sleep and mindset and today uh, is just about sharing with you some strategies that can help you in that endeavor now you know if you're watching here on youtube or anywhere just say hello so good evening who i've got there orion good evening <laughs> good evening to you sir good evening good evening mr p nice to see you on the show again again if you're watching this on any one of the platforms just say hi say hello it's great to know who's with me today and yes yeah, so i want to say thank you very very much to dr isaiah joseph for a great show 
that we had on uh, Monday. It was really wonderful. And it was my first international guest on the Make Health Your Habit um, podcast live. And next week, I actually have another international guest um, with me as well. But I want to say thank you very, very much. Good evening, Isaiah. Nice to see you. Here, and there he is. There he is. Good evening, Janet. Yes, good evening, Janet. You was on the show um, a few weeks ago. Good evening, Sharon. Another Jamaican on the line. Sharon. Sharon was in my program last year. Welcome, Sharon. Nice to see you. And who do we have here? Is that, I think it's Salia. I think I pronounced the name right. So definitely we've got one person from the USA and one person from Jamaica. We've got international guests. I am feeling the love this evening. And, you know, I really hope today proves to be a, a real informational and educational day. And good evening, KK. Thank you very much for, for joining us, as you do every single week in joining us. You know, in the message today, hello, Catherine. Good evening. Good evening to you. Keep the highs coming. Keep the hellos coming. I'd really love to see who's on the line. You know, um, the message that you heard prior to the show starting was about fear. That's the message this week. It's about fear. And the subject I'm talking about today, I mean, I don't really believe we should fear many things. Yeah, but definitely the subject and the manifestations of getting this subject wrong, we should absolutely fear. I'm telling you. And what I'm going to do for you today is just give you a snippet. That's all I'm going to do because I want to encourage you to go out and do your own research. Go out and look for yourself. Don't listen to everything Ken says. So the, the purpose of this show is just to stimulate some thought in your mind. So then you think, oh, maybe. And then you potentially go out and do your research like I have. So... Yes, it's a, a subject that's, you know, at the heart at what I do. So who's that? Baby, good evening to you again. Thank you very much for joining us today. Yes, there's a few people on the line today. I wonder how the sugar smash is going to go because we're going to have we're going to have a short presentation and then we're going to have a the sugar smash. And last week, a couple of the regulars, they got beat up. I mean, they got beat up so bad by some newcomers last week. So I know they're going to try and come back with a vengeance today with the Sugar Smash. The Sugar Smash is all about where we kind of take three foods and we break it down and we show you exactly how much sugar is in that fruit. So great, lovely. Let me get started with the show. I don't think there's anybody else that's going to say hello today again. So let me just take the comments off. And I'm just going to move on to the, to the presentation tonight. I want you to, as you watch the presentation... If you have any questions, just save them until the end because there's going to be a section at the end where you can ask some questions, all right? So dedicated five minutes or so, even more, where you can ask some questions. So say, write your questions down as I'm going through and just save them to the end. And I really hope you find, you know, what I'm going to show you interesting. And again, it's just a snippet. But really, it's something that you should really, really take on board. All right. So as I said, I'm the Lean Mind Body Coach. That's my book, the Lean Mind Body Method. And you can purchase it at my book. I'll show you uh, at the end. So I talk about sugar often. And the thing about sugar is it's so deceptive in so many ways. I mean, I, there are at least 56 names for sugar. There are some people who say there is even 75. Because they're creating new ways to be able to hide sugar in our food all the time. But there are at least 56 names for sugar. One of the most dangerous is high fructose corn syrup. If you ever see that on the back of anything you ever <clears throat> going to buy, run the other way. So one of the things I always say to everybody who I coach or I speak to is learn to read labels. Learn to look at the labels. And when you read the label, the ingredients are listed in order of quantity. So what's in it most is at the top. Look out for these names. And if you join my tribe community, I have a whole course which I can show you all the 56 names and, and what to look out for. Now, this guy called John Lodkin. He was a, a UK professor. 
this is a UK guy from the UK back in 1972 he described sugar in these three words pure white and deadly this is a UK professor describing sugar as pure white and deadly now did his comments get any traction no why because it was around the time around in 19, around 1970s where the McGovern Commission in America was putting together the food guidelines for America and the gentleman called Ansel Keys had presented something called the heart diet hypothesis which demonized fat so fat became the enemy so if fat was the enemy how can sugar be the enemy and plus there were some very powerful sugar lobbyists in America wanting to protect their interests so he didn't get any traction whatsoever. In fact, he got vilified for saying sugar was pure, white, and deadly, but he was absolutely right. And this is another gentleman called um, Robert Lustig. He's actually an American who describes sugar as a toxin, a toxin. And if you go online and you Google this guy here, Robert Lustig, and just Google something called the bitter truth, you will hear him do a whole presentation about why sugar is a toxin. I mean, Google him for yourself, Robert Lustig, The Bitter Truth, and you can hear all about his concept around sugar. And these are two eminent scientists describing sugar as pure white and deadly and a toxin. But you know what? Scientists have no how can I say, influence when, go, when they're going up against these powerful lobbyists, when they're going up against corporate interests. Because corporate interests are not interested in our health, they're only interested in our money. And, you know, when you demonize sugar, oh God, what happens to Coke? What happens to so many of the foods we eat and drink? So it was so much easier to say fat was the um, demon, but it's not. It's absolutely not. And I, and I can assure you my research and the research of many countless other people has shown that. So sugar is pure white and deadly, and it's a toxin. Now, how addictive is cocaine? Well, personally, I don't know, because I've never tried it. But what I can tell you is... Do you think sugar is as addictive as cocaine? And if it was, would you continue to take it? Let me just show you something. In our brain, we have various neurotransmitters. One of those neurotransmitters is a neurotransmitter called dopamine. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people describe dopamine as the pleasure hormone. It's actually the anticipation hormone. So what happens is, when you think about something that is pleasing, you have a release of dopamine. And then when you take part in activity, whatever that is, you, you release even more dopamine. All right. So, you know, when you're taking cocaine, yes, there is a reaction in your brain. And this is a scan of your brain. What your brain looks like, the neurotransmitter dopamine, <clears throat> its activity in your brain when you're about to take cocaine or when you're taking cocaine remember this is how your brain looks cocaine is such an addictive substance remember that but look how your brain looks when you're going to anticipate about taking sugar or eating sugar it doesn't look much difference to me does it look different to you look you get the same kind of anticipation, the same kind of acti activity, eating sugar as you do taking cocaine. This is why sugar has been described as just as addictive, in fact, possibly even more addictive than cocaine. But we don't realize it because sugar is something that we have grown up eating. We haven't grown up taking cocaine. Hopefully we haven't. But that's how addictive sugar is. You know that time when you're going to the cake shop and you're going to buy a sweet and you're giving the man the money and 
before you get the sweet or the chocolate, your, your mouth starts to water, your, your mouth starts saliva. That's the kind of dopamine, that, the anticipation. That's an addiction. So let me ask you a question. This is not a test to say whether you're a carb, ad, carb addict, but often I was a carb addict and often people are carb addicts and they don't even know. I'm going to give you a series of questions, just a few questions I've pulled out. If you answer yes to a couple of these, it doesn't mean you're definitely a carb addict, but I would definitely look a little bit further in. So the first question is, do you get, <coughs> sorry, do you get instant reward or hit as soon as you eat sweet or starchy or refined food? So once you eat a starch food, or do you immediately get like a rush? Do you immediately get a, a feeling of excitement? That's question number one. Question number two. Do you often graze or snack between meals? Now, I must admit, I used to suffer from this. I still actually suffer from it a little bit now. But snacking from a habit, but I eat low-carb, low-sugar snacks. Because snacking can also be a habit. But often, people snack between meals because what happens is... When you eat a carbohydrate, your blood sugar rises and then your blood sugar drops and then you eat that carbohydrate to push your blood sugar back up. So people snack between meals. So do you snack or graze between meals? Do you often eat to make yourself feel better? For example, when you're disappointed, under pressure or had an argument. You know food is a comfort food. Is that what you grab for? Whenever you're feeling down, whenever you're feeling stressed, do you just grab for food? Yeah, and it's not broccoli. It's normally some high sugar content food that kind of makes you feel better you know you see these films with these, these women eating the ice cream because it's the comfort food is that what you do and finally do you often feel unsatisfied after you've eaten a meal is that you you know a few weeks ago i spoke about your leptin and ghrelin hormones being out of sync but do you often feel unsatisfied if you have answered yes, there's possibly two or three, because in a, in a normal survey, there's about 10 to 15 questions. You could possibly be a carb addict. And you don't even know, because you've just been eating that way all your life. You don't realize you're a carb addict. And some carb addicts have, have had adverse affection, um, illnesses, and some people haven't. Yes? It's, genetics unfortunately some people can eat carbohydrates till the cows come home and they won't put on weight but it doesn't mean they won't get sick it does not mean and i'm going to show you a couple of ways that they can suffer from eating carbohydrates now i always talk about glucose and i mention how when you eat a carbohydrate a refined carbohydrate or any kind of carbohydrate it turns to glucose in your body and also i will talk about the other type of sugar which is fr fructose all right so just as a reminder when you eat glucose when you eat sorry when you eat carbohydrates it converts the glucose in your body all right insulin kicks in and then it starts to distribute the glucose to your muscles and your cells but your body can only store a certain amount of glucose and guess what happens the rest of the glucose is stored by insulin as fat that is the most simplistic way of me speaking about um, glucose all right now what are the side effects of eating too much sugar well high glucose levels now i'll tell you something Glu high glucose levels will affect every single part of your body whether you're thin or whether you're fat listen just feeling tired throughout the day. So you may be absolutely slim, yeah, or not. But how's your energy levels throughout the day? After you eat, do you sometimes feel tired? Coming up to 12 o'clock a, 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 a day, in, in the afternoon, do you feel tired? Hour after a meal, do you feel kind of tired? This is what happens with carbohydrates. When you have high glucose levels, when your glucose levels goes really, really high, and it comes back down. Sugar does this in all its forms, all right? Sugar aids in 
depression because sugar affects your mood. Now, you know, serotonin is, is, a, is, a, is a, another hormone, non-transmitter, that we talk about a lot. But the majority of your serotonin is produced in your gut, which is, again, affected by your food and the kind of food you eat. So when you eat too much sugar, it not just aids in depression, but it can help you stay in a depressed mood. Diabetes, I speak about diabetes all the time. And, you know, the, the crisis of diabetes is, you know, there are so many people who only find out that they have diabetes when they even go to the optician to get their eyes tested. And, you know, the amount of amputations, and that is the extreme side of diabetes that happens because people have diabetes and it just rots, rots their body because of the high blood sugar because of sugar they're eating you know i'm actually doing another course on diabetes reversal and and the, the theory was type 2 type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease that young people have so it, you know it's something that was originally attributed to young people i mean there are some people who do, do develop type 1 diabetes i mean that's in question but type 2 diabetes is also was also known as adult onset diabetes and the reason why it was known as that is because it it was crept up on people you know um, i was reading some research today it said it takes 20 years of continuous sugar eating for diabetes to creep up so you know if you're in and this is why people in their 40s and their 50s get diabetes because they've been eating sugar for so long and it's and they've been absolutely fine with it but then you get to a point where it's like a tipping point and all of a sudden, diabetes just comes in. So you know, you, even if you've been fine for many years eating diabetes, diabetes onset could happen in a very short space of time. And the research I was reading today was kind of shocking as to how quickly you can be from well to getting pre-diabetes to getting diabetes. And, you know, cardiovascular in incidents like heart disease and, and atherosclerosis, sugar aids in that. And I'm going to show you something at the end. Well, not the end, in your presentation, how sugar, I know people talk about fat is the reason. This is, this is not fat. Fat doesn't make you have a heart attack. Fat doesn't give you heart disease. Yeah, I know you're screaming at me. I know there's some people saying, no, it is fat. It's fat that blocks your heart. I know you're screaming at me. Scientifically, there is so much research that is saying this is not the case. All right. Now, look, you have children. Yes, there is research that's showing that children who eat too much sugar suffer from cognitive decline. I mean, children get up in the morning and you want them to eat something. And what do you give them? Sugar puffs. With sugar. On the way to school, they eat, they drink a Coke and a Mars bar, and then they go into school and you and you wonder why they are hyperactive or ADHD, ADHD. Wonder why they haven't got that thinking capacity. Studies have shown that when you reduce the sugar that young people take, their inclination to learn rises and their ability to learn rises. And, you know, I'm really, really passionate about that, about you know, it's one thing adults taking um, sugar, but we need to encourage our children and educate our children about sugar and what it can do for them. And if you can encourage your children to eat less sugar, they will perform better. They will have better mental clarity. I mean, again, you Google the research. It's there for everyone to see. And you, I don't know if you, you know that no one wants to get old quickly. No, but I mean, I'm 57 now. I mean, I, I, I don't want to get old. Um, well, I can't help getting old, can I? But no one wants to look old. But you know what sugar does? You could be absolutely slim. But what sugar does, it takes away the collagen in your skin. So you lose that elasticity, elasticity in your skin. So you eat sugar. You see it. People, as they grow up, they have this wrinkled skin. That is contributory to having too much sugar. If that's not a reason to reduce your sugar, 
even outside the weight, then what is? Because nobody wants to have wrinkly skin, do they? But too much sugar will contribute to you aging quickly, even if you don't put on weight. And this one, guys, uh, this one's a this one's a tough one for the guys look for the guys watching this. Too much sugar will lead to impotence. Believe me, if it's not working downstairs, sugar could be the reason. Yeah, many people alone, many men only realize they have diabetes because they're suffering from impotence. You know, the blood vessels in that part of our body are so thin, excess sugar just corrodes it. So if you're having trouble downstairs, think about the amount of sugar that you're having in your diet. And if you reduce the amount of sugar, believe me, it can improve your life in so many ways so and that's something that nobody no man wants to to go through and that's importance now i always talk about glucose i'm going to show you now just basically how fructose because i talk about glucose metabolizes in the body but fructose is metabolized by the liver so a lot of people think well fructose it's um great sugar it's healthy sugar because fructose is in fruit you know fruit that's made nowadays is far more sweeter because it's been manipulated than it was many years ago and many years ago we had things like high fructose corn syrup and it's still in some um, foods but fructose is even more dangerous than sucralose or glucose in the body and I'm going to show you just quickly how so look we eat fructose it's consumed our body now remember our body cannot metabolize fructose so it's metabolized in our liver all right so fructose is metabolized in our liver but guess what too much fructose and too much sugar in our liver will do to it it will give us fatty liver disease now it's actually called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease when this was first discovered people used to go to the doctor and they used the doctor to say you got fatty liver disease you drink and they said well no i'm teetotal and the doctor used to say no you must drink you have fatty liver disease and it's only when they discovered something called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease whereby people's livers were gaining a lot of fat through the carbohydrates and the sugar they eat. Again, this is not about weight. This is internal. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. We don't want to get that. But guess what happens? So you develop non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And if you don't develop that, what happens is your liver produces fat through a process called de novo lipogenesis, which is the process of producing new fat. So what happens, fructose goes into your liver and your liver starts to produce fat. De novo lipogenesis. Guess what happens? That, flat, that fat then enters into your bloodstream and you then start suffering from all sites, kinds of ailments. And, you know, if you talk about fat in the blood, it's called tricyclides. When you have high levels of that in your blood that is a sign of se severe illness and that is the kind of fat that leads to having atherosclerosis and heart disease this is fat in your blood from carbohydrates not fat from fat but fat that is produced in the liver through de novo lipogenesis which then enters your bloodstream as tricyclides and it's a terrible fat tricyclides and this is what causes atherosclerosis maybe another time i'll go into the etiology of that the pathway of how that actually happens but i'm just kind of throwing some stuff out here today and you can do your own research and not only that you get fat yeah so glucose makes you fat fructose makes you flat because i always talk about glucose so today i thought i really want to bring some clarity about glucose and what glucose can um, do um, for you. And there are a number of um, fruit substances out there that like even agave, 
a lot of vegans or, or vegetarians eat agave. Agave is, I think, about 80% fructose. It's incredibly high in fructose. So it, again, even though I may say it's a little bit more of a natural sugar, it's not a sugar they should be eating. And, you know, there are a couple of sugars I'm going to remind you of. I wasn't going to go into it, but I'm going to tell you some stuff that you can use. Now, I posted this question today to a few people who I posted out. Which one of the illnesses does not does sugar not affect? Diabetes, cancer, aging, impotence, heart disease, fatty liver disease, or childhood cognitive decline? Sugar affects all of them. Every single one of them and a host of other illnesses. Sugar is, a, is one of the root causes in many of these illnesses. Now look, it's your health, absolutely your choice, yes? I'm just the messenger. I just share a message with you every single week, just a short message and just to reinforce to you what I feel you need to do. It's your choice. I know the choice that I've made. I know the choice my clients have made. I know the choice of the people around me who have listened to me have made and they've benefited from it. It's just your choice. It's your health, you know? And I always kind of use the matrix example in this. You look, these are the sugars. These are the kind of things that you, even if you didn't know after watching the show each week, you now know these are the things you shouldn't be eating. Or if you eat them, it should be in moderation. So every time you eat, you either say to yourself, is this a blue pill meal? Now, a blue pill is going to take you down the road to ill health. Or is this something red pill? Yes, red pill is healthy in the context of low carb, low sugar. The blue pill is this high sugar food you can see on the top. So whenever you look at a food in the simplest way, is this a red pill food or is this a blue pill food? Eat red pill food. This is a simple way that I have, I used in the beginning to allow me to stay away from certain foods, you know? So I'm gonna come back now and I'll see if there may, let me see if there's any questions that any of you have on the presentation that I have just given. If you have any questions, I'm willing to answer them at this point. Let me just tell you some sugar that I use. There are three sugars that I use. One is called erythron, one is called xylitol, and one is called stevia. And they're sugar alcohols. And these kind of sugar alcohols are natural sugars that don't raise your blood sugar or don't raise your insulin in the way that normal sugars do. So you can just Google, Google xylitol, Google erythrol, and Google stevia. If you wanted to use a kind of sweetener in your tea or coffee that wasn't gonna really bring you, give you any kind of those deleterious effects that sugar eats. You know, all I am is the messenger. I just each week trying to reinforce to you the reasons why you need to reduce your sugar intake and not just table sugar but in all its forms uh, so it, it, mr p says sorry it's fat that doesn't cause heart disease yes it's fat that doesn't cause heart disease i think that's how you're reading it mr p but definitely fat doesn't cause heart disease i know not the fat you eat not the fat that you eat the stearic acid the fat you ingest that doesn't cause it's carbohydrates believe me and you know the the commercial interests don't want you to know that they just don't want you to know that because nobody wants to know the commercial interests they don't want you to know that you can heal yourself with food they want you to take a medication just like they're pushing certain things on us right now the finances they don't want you to know you can heal yourself of many illnesses just by changing your diet but that's the fact and so many people um has done I had a conversation with someone who's on my program today and i cannot remember the name because I've, i think it's it's sarcosis i think it's something called sarcosis which is something to do with the lung and she's on my tri program i've never heard of it before and she said to me ken i went and i had an x-ray and they told me that the mass had been reduced so i had to google it and and lo and behold a low carb ketogenic diet helped with the condition. I had no idea. And that's 
uh, she's lost weight, but also this mass on her lung has been reduced because she's reduced the sugar she's taking. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful news. So, hope. Uh, well, maybe I've just given the presentation to clear where there are no questions. Maybe if you have some at the end, I would do that. But let me now move on. So that's the message for today. Sugar's a toxin. Sugar is pure white. Avoid it in all its forms as much as you can. You know, and I will keep repeating this message in different forms every single week. As I said, if I reach one person every week, then my job is done. So let's just move on to the next section, which I know is the sugar smash section of the show where what i do i just take a few food items and i kind of smash them up and i'll show you how much sugar is in them and last week was quite fun it in fact it was really really fun last week because you know some of the new people got some answers wrong and some of the people who've been watching every single week got their ass well i won't say that but you know kind of got a beating all right so i just like to Say so this section is all about you saying no to sugar. Again, reinforcing what I've gone through in the show today. All right. Again, you know, these foods here, these are all carbohydrates, the fruit, the, 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 the banana, there's fructose, which you now know how that can affect your body. But, you know, Coke and bread and rice and pasta, they're all different forms of sugar. All right. And these forms of sugar make you fat. And if you if you didn't know that now, you should know it now especially if you watch me every single week you should know that now all right so i'd like to share with you some of the government guidelines and these guidelines again are just about added sugar you know it doesn't even take in consideration the sugar in your food but you really really need to take in consideration the sugar in your food because all of the sugar adds up so let's begin with the sugar smash for this week all right now hit <coughs> I'm going to start a little bit differently because I want to know if anybody knows what this fruit is. It's all fruit today. Does anybody know what this fruit is? Yes, yeah, so bananas are high in sugar, in fructose. Um, Charlene, I haven't eaten a banana for at least, well, since I started my journey. And I actually love bananas. But again, it's your choice. If you're diabetic, you really need to stay away from bananas. It's incredibly high in sugar. Does anyone know what this fruit is? It's, partic partic it's particularly a Jamaican fruit. I'm really curious. This is not the sugar smash. I just thought because this is such an unusual um, fruit, I thought, let me ask if anyone knows what this fruit is. No one knows? No one's going to have a guess? Anyone going to have a guess what this fruit is? Yes? It begins with S. And the second one begins in T. If you're from Jamaica... You should know this fruit here. No one knows. It. Okay, well let me let me tell you what this fruit is called. It's called stinking toe. Yes, stinking toe. <clears throat> that is the name of this fruit. Actually, not stinking toe. Yes, yeah, yes. Let's see how you get on there. Let's see how you get on. Ah, someone said it. Oren, well done. You knew stinking toe. Well done. I saw that come in. Ah, uh, no, no, it's not sweet potato, Lloyd. Come on, it's not sweet potato. Yeah, Oren, you did say it. Well done. <coughs> it's thinking tone. I don't know where they got the name from, but it's 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 a it's a it's a fruit quite popular in Jamaica. So what we have here is hundred grams, and these are the options because I used to used to call it low. Okay, you call it locust, Isaiah. Okay. And, and as this, I'm guessing this is in Dominica, you call it locus. In, Do, in Dominica, yes. Okay, we have different names, all right? So these are the options. Could I actually let you guess outright? But now I'm being nice. So is it A, 8.5, B, 9.5, or C, 10 teaspoons of sugar in this in 100 grams of stinking toe? Who is going to take the first guest today? Let's see how Mr. P and anybody else who wants to take part. Just say A, B, C, you know, just have a guess. It's a fun, it's, just, it's a fun game just to see what happens. So Catherine has come in with 10. That's C. Okay, Catherine, you're, you're putting Orin has said B. Okay, 9.5. 
let me see who else is coming in and um that mr p you're not guessing today okay k said b mr p come on let's see isaiah said c okay so we got b and c at the moment b and c at the moment and i'm just waiting for mr p because i'm nice like that charlene said b oh we <clears throat> we have a number of people with b today I think Mr. P is a bit nervous because he, he kind of got beat up last week. So I think that's why he's hesitating. So I'm just going to go ahead and smash this now and see if we are right. So B's really coming out on top. OK, let's see where we're going. Let's smash this 100 grams of sinking toe and see where we come in. 8.75. Oh, wow. Well, you know what? Mr. K Lloyd, you were absolutely right. And to everybody else who didn't say A, but Mr. Casalsa Lloyd, we need to give you a round of applause. Yeah, guys, you were you 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 you, you had a guess, you had a guess, and that's absolutely right. And Mr. C, you came in at ten, and you were way off again. You're not doing well this week again. But Lloyd, you were right with A. Well done. Let's move on to the second. Um, this is gooseberry, a hundred grams of gooseberry. And these are the options. It's a 1.5 teaspoon, two spoons, um, B 3.5 teaspoons and C four teaspoons. Again, this part of the show is just to uh, give you an idea of the kind of sugar. Now each teaspoon represents about four grams of around right about four, 4.2 grams of sugar. All right, so let's see where we're going. So Catherine's come straight in with A. Yes, let's see, uh, 1.5. Okay, let's see who else is coming in with a guest. Mr. P, are you going to come in on this one or are you going to stand out again? You know, you came in late last time. So let's do it. Ah, Charlene is coming with A, 1.5. Mm, yeah, okay. A is looking really good at the moment. Remember, just use your comments box, either on YouTube or wherever you are just to make a comment so let's see where you're going so a's coming in gooseberries are absolutely gorgeous so as i's coming with b and mr djp's coming with a smile i mean i think he's feeling a bit threatened i think you know he's feeling a bit threatened with all these new people on <clears throat> and getting the answers right i think he's feeling a bit threatened but so we have a and we have b and we have kk coming in with c okay so we so we, we have a full house we have a full house gooseberries i like gooseberries let's see you are you are you gonna guess mr p it doesn't like you're gonna come in and guess you're really being a bit rested today but let's smash these hundred grams of gooseberries and see how many teaspoons of sugar is in this hundred gram of gooseberries 1.5 well done Anybody who said A, well done to anybody who said A. Let me give you a round of applause. And to the anybody who said anything else, yeah, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. And you know, okay, so there's a there's a there's a big delay. Okay, we'll get your answers in quicker, Mr. P, and then we can because we're getting your messages in. And KK, uh, listen, KK has been was doing well before last week, but this week. She's not doing too well again. <clears throat> and Mr. Oh, you can't come in with that A, Mr. P, right now. No way. We're not having that. We're not having that. So, well done to anybody who said gooseberries are great. Great low carb fruit to be able to eat. Yes? So, this is the last fruit today. <clears throat> and it's called tamarind. Tamarind has like a, a sweet and sour kind of taste. And, you know, in doing some research, it has some medicinal benefits tamarind i'm sure it's you it's it, it, it was a native of, of west africa but i know it must be called something in some other islands so let's see if you anybody can redeem themselves if mr p or kk can redeem themselves here a 10.5 teaspoons <clears throat> b 12.5 or c 14.5 teaspoons there are some people have got two out of two Let's see what we're going to come in today. So let me see where we're going. Is that, is that, is that Orin coming with A again? I think he did. Catherine's coming with A. 
that's great let's see where we look it's, it's actually a, a, a kind of, it looks like the kind of thing you really have to peel Charlene's coming with B so we have A and B which is great KK's coming in with B and Mr. P's not coming with anything Isaiah's coming with B so B's looking really really strong and Mr. DJP is coming with yay and I think Salaya, I hope I pronounced your name right. You're coming with A. So we've got A and B. No one's going for C today. But let's see how you are getting on. I'll wait a couple of seconds more in case anybody wants to have a guess. Again, you know, it's so enlightening when you realize the amount of sugar in these foods. And, you know, every week I do different kind of foods. Last week it was, it was a mixture of Caribbean and African food. So baby's coming with B. And Steve, um, Mr. Orange, is coming with A. And Janet is coming with B. Ah, oh, so that's a, we've really got a mixture. But no one said C. So let's smash this tamarind and let's just see how we're looking today. Mr. DJ Pay's coming in with a late A. 14.5. Ah, oh, God. Uh, it's, I'm not nice, am I? So to all of you, because no one said C. And again. And one more time. Yes, yes, yes. Today, I caught. So you, you guys got two out of three, but not three out of three. I caught you on the last one. Yes, Tamarin has 14.5. It's actually a very, very, very sweet fruit. A very, very sweet fruit. I, I mean, I love um this game here it just really enlightens um people about the amount of sugar in their fruit yes it it, it can be you really can be quite strange when you realize so i'm going to come back to that in a moment so listen that was a sugar smash that just allowed you to understand the kind of sugar that's in fruit sometimes it's fruit food but today it's um fruit i thought let me go on some tropical fruit let me just share with you guys some you said c orange did you say c my apologies if you said c then let me get let me let me let me give you if you did say c the messages went down and i might have missed that one so so orion if you said c well done well done if you said see let me just share with you some things that are happening with the lean mind body coach i'm going to take the comments off here for a moment listen my tribe community is open it's absolutely wonderful look if you're age 40 if you need to lose weight you need to gain some more energy and improve your health listen tribe can help you it's open it was open last week and you know there's a 14 day trial you can go to tribe and just try it out just go to the website leanlifestyletribe.com sign up for the 14 day trial it's i've really worked hard on that you know and all the things that we are talking about in this show tribe can help you do it's a membership community because for me it's about building a community of people who not just do something for a month but do it for a lifestyle so tribe is all about creating a community and there's a major focus on african and caribbean food it has a mixture of food but it has a major focus on african and caribbean food and especially as a legacy to my mum, because i know if my mum was around i could have helped her more so i after her passing i want to help as many people enjoy the foods i grew up on and lose weight and look just to show you some of the things in tribe look there's a whole membership dashboard that gives you a whole nav nav navigation i've just updated it it's really looking nice and look we have loads of different recipes and all the recipes are broken down into macronutrients, your carbs, your protein and your fat. So you know exactly what you can eat and it's net carbs. It's all broken down. I have food guides. So do you know like the fruit I've just showed you? I have guides there that have Caribbean fruits and normal fruit listed and it tells you exactly how much sugar is in that fruit so you can decide whether you want to buy that fruit there are so many of those guides on the site and there's more coming and there's a whole interactive shopping list on the side and the site and there's video education where you can go and there are courses where you can learn about sleep learn about your mindset 
learn about exercise, learn about carbohydrates, learn about diabetes. I mean, there are so many courses on there and there are more to come. And if you join for the 14 day trial, what you do, you go for what we call a leaner you program. So it's not just a 14 day trial where you just look at the site. I take you every day for a program for 14 days. And even if you decide not to join that 14 day program, will benefit you so if you decide to join it'll be lovely if you don't then i hope you still gain some benefit from the leaner you program you should just visit lean lifestyle tribe.com and there's a whole community this community is a support community where you can go on there it's not a facebook group it's a dedicated platform that's been created where you can ask questions get support get coaching get mentoring i mean it, it, it it's really i'm so proud of what's been produced and what will be produced in the future. So check out Tribe. All right, join now at leanlifestyletribe.com, 14 day free trial. Listen, I have this brotherhood program, <coughs> which I'm starting on the 2nd of January. This is strictly just for men. I held this program last year and um, it was for mix. And one person lost at least 21 pounds during the program. This one's aimed at men because men need to look after themselves a little bit more. All right. And you can register for this particular program at the leanmindbodycoach.com. And if you register before the 14th of, of December, you'll get £700 worth of bonuses. Now, these is not just made up bonuses. These are actual bonuses, which include coach, personal coaching from me. So go to the leanmindbodycoach.com, check it out, register. Or if you have any questions, email me. This is going to be a small group VIP coaching any man that goes on this program will come out fit, leaner, fitter, and stronger. I assure you, I am going to work so hard with it on this program. So this is December, January the 2nd, January the 2nd, when this program will be launching, all right? And if you want to, my book, you can go to leanmindbodycoach.com also to purchase the book. And I have, you know, we're talking about low-carb meals. You can go to leanmindbodycoach.com or leanlifestyletribe.com and you can register for my main list and you'll get this five day meal plan. This meal plan is great. Look, it's got like, this is some of the meals. It's garlic trout. This is one of the meals. This is another one, which is jerk chicken with my own jerk sauce, low carb jerk sauce on it. This is curry salmon. Wah! Ah, delicious that curry salmon is. And in that free gift, there's a shopping list. There's um, guides to what do what you to, to do with leftovers. Everybody who's purchased it, give, not even purchased it, everyone who's registered and got it free has given some great feedback. So go to the leanmindbodycoach.com or leanlifestyletribe.com. If you go to leanlifestyletribe.com, it will come up when you move your mouse off the page. So go there, register on the site just for the main list and you get a free gift. Why not? It's free. Go there. All right? Or the leanmindbodycoach.com. Get the gift there. Next week, Wednesday, I'll be back. And I'm thinking about talking about cooking oils because I remember my mum coming back from Ridley Mode Market with a big tin of corn oil. And I thought it was great. But now my experience have told me that these oils are really, really bad for you. And that's what I may focus on. Not guaranteed, but I may focus on that next week. And on Monday, absolutely great. I have another international guest and it's going to be some weight loss stories. And it's going to be a, about how she lost weight using um, a low carb diet. So that's a weight loss story this Monday for Make Health Your Habit Life. So join me on Monday for that. And you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, just subscribe because you'll get notified whenever I do anything. So if you're watching on YouTube, just subscribe. If you're watching this on in on Facebook, on, on my page, just like it so you'll be notified whenever i do anything all right so now let's move to the final part of the show which is what i call a lean reflection and this is just where i'm just going to share with you just a, a thought for you to take away with and you know i love stories i think stories really kind of portray a message and i'm going to tell you a story about a guy called bob proctor <clears throat> fantastic motivational speaker i've listened to so much of his stuff and uh one day I went to one of his seminars and there was a big crowd and he pulled a young man on the stage and he asked the young man a question. He said to the young man, he said, young man, how much 
do you earn a year? And the young man told him, he said about 19,000. He was a young man. And Bob Potter said, 19,000, okay, that's great. And he said, then he said to the young man, he said, why do you not think you earn more than 19,000? You've had a few years to do what you want to do. Why do you not think you, you have earned more than 19,000? And the young man kind of spilled out all of these excuses, all of these reasons in his mind why he could not earn more than 19,000. And then Bob Proctor stopped the gentleman, put his hand on his shoulder and looked at him and said these words. He said, young man, could the reason be that you only earn 19,000 pounds a year be because you think like a 19,000 pound a year person? The audience was silent because they wasn't expected that. Could the reason you only earn 19,000 pound a year be because you think like a 19,000 pound a year person? Now that's relative to your income. But let's relate that to your life and your fitness and your health. What do you think about yourself? What do you think? What kind of person do you think like? If you are 14 stone and you want to be 12 stone, do you think like a 14 stone person? If you want to be fitter and you're not fit, do you think like a person who goes to the gym regularly or exercises regularly if you want to lose weight and you understand it's your diet do you think like a person who has to plan eat the right foods monitor his food cook the right meals or do you think like the kind of person who can't be bothered or thinks it's too much effort or thinks at his time of life or her time of life I'm too old to change or I'm too busy to change or I've got so many other things to do. What kind of person do you think like? So if you want to achieve any goal, but particularly we'll talk about your health and your weight, you need to think like the person you want to become. If you want to give up sugar, yes, you not only need to think like that person, but to get there, you need to let go of the old thinking. Because I know some of the things I say on this show challenges your beliefs. It challenges the narrative that you grew up on. But you need to let go of that narrative. Because I suffered from that cognitive dissonance. Where I was challenged by what I grew up with. And what I was now learning. And I'm so glad I embraced what I was now learning. Because that's why I was able to lose... 50 pounds in six months, reverse my pre-diabetes, cure my sleep apnea, increase my energy, and so much more. So what kind of person, like that young man on the stage, what you're thinking like? And if your thinking is not right, find someone who thinks like the kind of person you want to become. Find someone who's being healthy, who's being fit. Look at study what they do and just duplicate that mimic that and that's where coaching comes in and that's where when you're in a community of people like tribe people moving in the same direction it helps to change your thinking so that's the message today what you're thinking if you have not been able to lose weight or improve your health what has your thinking been like you just haven't been thinking about the kind of person that needs to do what you need to do. So that's the message for today. Guys, listen, look, you could have been anywhere today, but you decide to be with me, Kenda Lee, my body coach. It's fantastic. Each week, there are more of you on the show. I'll be here every single week because I'm really passionate about what I do. You know, really love feedback about the show in any way. It's just wonderful that you guys have taken the time out to be with me today. As I said, I'll be back here next week, Monday, and I will be here on Wednesday, next week, Wednesday, yes, with another Lean Bites live show. I really hope 
you have gained something from today's show. I really hope you have learned something. Go and do your research. Sugar is a toxin. It's pure, white and deadly. Listen, it's something you need to reduce. Listen, as I always like to say to you, of all the things you could do, of all the habits you can develop, the best habit you can do is to make health your habit. Thanks for listening to the Lean Bites Live podcast show. Remember, the views and opinions expressed during the show represent those of the host of the show alone. We hope you enjoyed the 